I, I need to do some terms with you. Ions first. Ions are cations or anions, positive or minus. For cations, there can be monoatomic or polyatomic. This is a big deal in naming. Monoatomic, one atom. Lithium plus, strontium, strontium two plus, etc. Polyatomic, more than one atom, NH4 plus. This is one of the ones you'll need to know later. Ammonia ion. Anions, likewise, can be monoatomic, Cl minus, N3 minus, one atom. Or polyatomic, multi atoms, uh, sulfate, SO4 two minus, or phosphate, PO4 three minus. Okay? So, know that difference, mono versus poly. Mono meaning one, poly meaning many. Okay, now that you know that, uh, I can introduce you to names. This is also in the reader, not in the textbook, unfortunately. Uh, there are four types of things we're going to name. This has the first three. Okay? The types are ionic, molecular, and aqueous acid. Ionic, molecular, and aqueous acid. Those are the three types. Okay, first, uh, you need to tell the difference between the ionic, molecular, and aqueous acid because they each have different naming systems. For ionics, you recognize ionic because it has a metal in it. If there's a metal, it's ionic. Okay? You recognize a molecular because there's no metal. Simple as that. Okay? And then you're going to recognize an aqueous acid if there's an H in front. So if an H is the first atom listed, it's an aqueous acid. There can be acids that are not aqueous and they have a different naming system, uh, which I'm not going to cover in lecture. Okay, so those are the three types. Now, within ionic, there's two subcategories. It can be binary or ternary. Binary means there's only two different atoms involved, like sodium chloride, NaCl. Okay? That's a type of naming that has its own system of naming. A different system of naming is the ternary. This is Na2SO4. That's a little smudgy. No, oh, that looks worse. Okay, whatever. Uh, that's called sodium sulfate. It has more than two kinds of atoms in it. So that has a different naming system than binary, unfortunately. Then there's molecular. There's only one subcategory for it that we'll see, and that's the binary, two different types of atoms. A typical example is CO2, carbon dioxide. Within aqueous acid, there's two subcategories. There's binary. Two different types, and you see hydrogen is listed first. HCl is hydrochloric acid. And then a different naming system. So really, these two are named differently. A ternary, more than two types of atoms. H is still listed first. H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. Just so you can see at this point, sulfuric acid doesn't start with the prefix hydro. But a binary always does. This is hydrochloric acid. That's how you know it's binary, which we'll go over in a moment. Okay, you're wondering how the heck do I remember how to name all of these and what is the naming system? It's worse than you think. <laughs> I don't know what it is. This is in your reader. It's all of this so you don't put your hand out. This is what's in my brain. Okay. This is how I do it. If you come up with a different system, that's totally fine. Here's our three categories, ionic, molecular, and aqueous acid. And then you see the ionic has binary and ternary, and so does aqueous acid. So there's the sub, the types. What I do, and now we're going to do examples momentarily. I ask myself, TM stands for transition metal. Is there a transition metal, yes or no? That's significant in how you name it. Because you thought Super Pope right now is the only person who knows Latin, but we also will be speaking Latin in this class. Some transition metals can be named either in English or in Latin. So you get to learn Latin and be like the Pope. Uh, then for almost everything we're going to name, it's going to have a first name and a second name, just like you have a first name and a last name. Just like that, uh, so will molecules. And so I'm going to go over this chart as we do examples, okay? But this is the flow of how I figure out what to name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When the molecule has a charge, you'll see, but uh, it doesn't 
we will see a moment, in a moment what happens when there's a chart. Again, we can't name everything, everything with this. But we're going to name most molecules, especially everything we'll see. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you another chart uh, table that's in the reader. Let me just show you what's in the reader, literally. This is also in the textbook. It looks a little different in the textbook. In the textbook, uh, this is on page 93, top of the page. It's a table. These are called polyatomic ions, as I mentioned earlier. In order to do naming, you've got to learn all of these. Not just I'm not the only one who's an oppressor. I know Professor Wright is an oppressor. Uh, the other classes have to learn these two. Okay? So you got to learn all these, the names and what they look like uh, in order to do naming. Notice that, uh, let's see, one of them, see the ammonium ion, is the only polyatomic cation we're going to learn. It's up here. Uh, everything else is an anion, meaning a negative charge. So, there's only one cation to learn for our class. But you will have to learn these, so this will be one of those spots you do have to do some memorization. Um, there is, if you want to take a look in the reader, uh, there's something called Polyatomic Patterns YouTube uh, video. Uh, you can watch this, and there's a lot more videos, but this tell, gives you some patterns on how to learn this in a less memorizing way. Okay. A uh, couple more things. Uh, again, I'll just show you the reader, it's easiest. Um, this table here on the left hand side. When you have a transition metal, you'll see when we do examples. I just want to alert you to it ahead of time. Some of them can be named in Latin. And here are some of the examples. Uh, Iron, copper, silver, gold, mercury, tin, and lead can all be named in Latin. So you also have to learn the Latin stem name. So for iron, it's F-E-R-R. -R. For copper, it's cuprum. The Latin looks like the symbol. For A-U, it's or, like Oroville. Uh, for uh, silver, it's argent, like Argentina, uh, etc. Okay, so you'll need to know the Latin names. These are the common oxidation states I already mentioned to you earlier. And then when we do molecular, we're going to use these prefixes. Okay? So a lot of stuff to kind of stick in your mind when we do naming. It's not hard to do naming. You just have to remember all the moving pieces.